no surprise, really, this tit-for-tat response from Russia. Absolutely not. I mean, any leader of any country needs to be seen to draw a response to another um, potential antagonist who is ripping up international treaties. And, you know, I, I was a schoolgirl in the 1980s. I remember the sort of the, the doom-laden fear that we were taught at that time about the escalation of the Cold War and the potential of nuclear strikes. And the idea that the INF treaty was put in place to stop very little warning time for any potential nuclear strike, which is what it actually means rather than intercontinental ballistic missiles. Um, was actually a really good step forward. <clears throat> that treaty, of course, was signed between uh, President Reagan and President Gorbachev back in 1987. So the fact it's now being torn up now mm. is, I think, very worrying. And it also reflects, to a certain extent, I think, how President Trump, who has largely been boxed in by what some people call the deep state or the intelligence security complex in America, to stop him, try to uh, arrange more sort of... Uh, a happy relationship between America and Russia. And I think it's very worrying for all of our security. Mm. So, so what do you think the US has to gain here from doing this? Is it just sort of sticking a wedge then between <coughs> Russia and America, or are there other factors too? I think this is part of a, a, a growing pattern that we've seen ever since the end of the Cold War back in 1989-1990, where NATO has expanded exponentially. Uh, so when the Cold War ended, of course, there was a gentleman's agreement between America and Russia that if Germany was allowed to reunify between East Germany and West Germany, then NATO would not expand one inch further than the border of East Germany. Since then, of course, we've seen that 13 other countries in Europe have been amalgamated into NATO. And, of course, there's been a, a massive expansion of NATO war games right on the border of Russia. There's been a deployment of weapons right on the border of Russia. And there have been also uh, moves to try and integrate countries such as Ukraine and Georgia into NATO right on the borders of Russia. So it's been quite an aggressive pattern over the last almost 30 years right on the border of a country that wants to assert its sovereign power. And, you know, which country doesn't? Sure. Um, with that said, though, that's always been sort of a policy, hasn't it, between the US and the EU, this expansion of NATO. But here we're seeing the EU very cautious about what Trump is saying and planning to withdraw, or he has withdrawn, from the INF Treaty. What can the EU do, perhaps, to sort of mentize uh, and get this treaty back on track? I think that's a, a very difficult problem. Um, Trump, of course, has been very um, outspoken about his distrust of NATO, uh, the fact that the most European countries are not paying their way in the NATO alliance. The EU is talking about setting up its own EU army to defend against threats such as supposedly Russia. Um, so it's, it's a very sort of fluid situation at the moment. Um, so who knows how it's going to escalate. But the fact that uh, the US wants to rip up this treaty, mm. play uh, intermediate range nuclear missiles, which will give very little warning of an attack, in Europe again. One is very bad for the EU security because it puts them right in the, the target of any countries that might be threatened. And of course, um, it means that uh, Trump is also um, tacitly still supporting the NATO uh, agreement. So who knows? John mm. Bacay, just very briefly to Annie. Um, President Putin said, look, we don't want an arms race here, but inevitably, I mean, looking at <laughs> what's happening, that's what we're going to get, is it? I think it's inevitable. And I think it's partly, as I mentioned before, that uh, President Trump, when he was uh, first elected, said he wanted to rapprochement with Russia. And he's been hedged around, hedged around with the, uh, the legal investigations about his so-called collusion with Russia, uh, the Robert Mueller investigation. He's been hedged around and hedged around with national security advisors who are uh, Cold War uh, headbangers like John Bolton. So it almost seems that he's been hedged in so much that he can't actually do something that he wanted to do, which would be good for world peace generally. Mm. Annie, good to talk to you. We're going to have to leave it there. That was Annie Mashon, uh, former MI5 intelligence officer. Thank you.